All right. Okay. We're we're figuring podcast start, stuff out. Start before we start before <laughs> something goes wrong. Um, <laughs> hurry, hurry. Hi, welcome to the Basement Life Podcast. This the is the fourth one we filmed, but only the second one we've posted. What the fuck? Uh, it's called <laughs> depression, Yazzie. No, it's called we need an assistant. We do. We because really do. Because every single one has been ruined by something that we find afterwards. In the post-production. Whether it be that my audio didn't work, or sure. the video didn't work, or it's just... Yep. Or, like, we're just turned too far and you can't see or hear us. Anyway, anyway you know, for this making time... us feel better, we're going to c- call this uh, four minus two. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we got a format now. Sort of. The way it's going to go is we're going to tell you what we did with our week. Then we're going to talk about. That's relevant. We're not going to talk about our. our is this today I clean my room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to. We're not going to go into I the took the garbage stuff. out. I mean, relevant shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, then we're going to talk about what the week did with itself. That's For, the so, news. So this week we're talking about, we wrote it down because we're stupid. SAG-AFTRA versus uh, Crunchyroll. And Netflix. And not versus SAG-AFTRA. Yep. Uh, Bunny Girl Senpai 2 and everything else that was announced at the Aniplex thing. Yep. Um, Japan's opening back up. Woo! 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 I can't read what the fuck this says. Uh, and then we're going to close it off on a thing we're going to try uh, called, we don't have a name for it. Yeah, I spend a Yazzie's lot of time. Yeah, I spend a lot of time ending up in like weird corners of the internet, mostly because I just go where algorithms tell me to go. I, <laughs> like if the TikTok algorithm tells me that today I'm stuck on this side of TikTok, so be it. Uh, so I've ended up in some weird places, so this time we're going to talk about this uh, trending topic on TikTok currently, uh, Karen's Diner. We're yeah. going to go into that today, this week. Um, that's going to be our... That, and then that's Yazzie's yeah. random corner of bullshit this week, <laughs> unrelated to anything we talk about. But uh, we'll, we'll learn some things, maybe. You go ahead. You start. Okay, so I just put out a video about Cyberpunk Edgerunners, uh, which is a very good anime by CD Projekt Red and Hiroyuki Maishi and Trigger. Uh, in my video, I focused mostly on, on you know, Trigger's uh, influence and, and Imaishi's direction. But in doing so, I kind of downplayed uh, the work of Rafal Yaki and uh, the other people from CD Projekt Red who brought that story together and uh, were like heavily involved in the pre-production phase of the anime, going back and forth with Trigger and, and uh, nailing down, um, you know, the how the story went and all that. So I just want to correct the record on that and make it clear that in addition to the talented Japanese artists who worked on that show, a lot of very talented Polish artists did. Uh, also worth noting that a lot of the in-game soundtrack uh, got into the anime and that it wasn't just Akira Yamaoka composing. Uh, and I'm aware of this now because I've been playing the game and that soundtrack fucking slaps. Oh, it's so you're, you're going to be doing a follow up type video. Huh? I'm going to be doing a couple. A, at least a couple. Yeah, I, I've got like. I've got some thoughts on on like how the show portrays mental health that like. Could make a video out of, but I don't want people thinking it's anime with mental health issues. Top five. <laughs> That sort of clickbait. Um, if there's any anime videos I could delete off the internet, I think yeah, it might be those. Yeah, uh, that's. This is a safe place to say that, right? Yeah, th- None of that us was like definitely videos, a low right? point for AnyTube, one hundred percent. So anyway. But yeah, no, like, like, I want, I, I want to get into that because, because I, I genuinely think that despite how, you know, the whole cyber psycho thing plays up the fear of the mentally ill as like a trope it actually like subverts that in a really clever way that makes for some of the best commentary on how society treats people with mental illness uh i've seen in media um and like i'll probably have to like read the tabletop game books or something for that because like there's a whole bunch of lore i'm that and the anime conveys that lore very well like i 
I picked up on stuff just from watching the anime that like people who've played the tabletop game were saying in the comments. It's a testament to how good the anime is that that your reading is so close to the actual lore. Um, but like, I still want to go into the lore on that. I also want to make a video talking about how good video game adaptations happen. And maybe I'll talk at some point about how the game is beyond what I'm saying here. But like, in general, so far, it's pretty cool. The graphics are uh, awesome. Um, the yeah. the like like it's just actually insane how detailed the visuals are. Um, and the you know the gunplay feels pretty solid. Uh, it's, I'm kind of regretting playing on hard mode though because like. When you shoot a guy in the head, he doesn't go down most of the time. And I guess that's, like, accurate to them being cyborgs, but it just also feels kind of bad. But <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I skill mean. Skill issue. <laughs> yeah, it is a skill issue. It's okay. Um, I wouldn't be able to get anywhere in that game because those are not my kind of games. So I'd be crying by that point. Probably. <laughs> um, I mean, you might like the characters at least, and you can, like... There's a surprising amount of options to just go into s scenarios and handle them non-lethally, at least so far. Um, I picked the Corpo path, so I haven't been uh, taking that. Uh, I figured it would be fun to, like, play as somebody uh, who, like, you know, had that sort of inside knowledge and goes on, like, an arc where they, they gradually become less of a bag of shit as the story goes on. Um but, you know, I, I think it, it's a very good video game. Uh, the patches have certainly uh, brought the stability of it up from what I had previously seen of the game, which was, uh, you know, the, the action button review and a whole bunch of glitch clips, just so many glitch clips. Uh, but, yeah, no, I'm, I'm having fun with it. It's, it's a cool video game, G good anime. Uh, and I am looking forward to, to seeing all the things from the anime and being like, ah, I remember that. And then going back to the anime and being like, ah, I remember that. It'll be, you know, it'll be good. Uh, and you have also been playing What a games. segue. <laughs> what a segue. I have. I'm not going to lock and load this because I'm not going to lock and load this because it makes a scary popping noise that makes me want to cry. Technically speaking, uh, your game is also dystopia, uh, dystopian cyberpunk, right? It is, right? because Team Chaos won. Not cyberpunk, but it is a dystopian world, because like, like Team Max. Chaos won! <laughs> I was Team Chaos in Splatoon 2. I am Team Cali no matter where I go. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the end. That's it? That's the whole... <laughs> that's, that's it. That's the whole thing. Team Cali for life. So how have you been enjoying uh, working for a genocidal grizzly bear again? I love Salmon Run! <laughs> I love committing crimes for a bear. <laughs> well, he it's, abuses me verbally like any good boss does. Anyway, actually, before we play, talk about Splatoon, a way more important thing that happened to me this week. Uh -huh. A way more important thing. Uh, more tragic, actually. Not important. Tragic. <laughs> I broke a nail. Do you see that? Okay, it actually really hurt though. Yeah, no. I, I, it, but like, look, look. It's only. It hasn't even been a week yet. It hasn't yeah, even you been, had. Look at how incomplete it looks. It's always that pinky, too. I know. I don't need it anymore. Cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> Just amputate anyway, the pinky. Anyway, but less importantly, <laughs> less importantly than the fact that I... <laughs> uh, I've been playing Splatoon 3, and um, I'm a Splatoon addict, like a Splatoon addict. It is one of, I would say next to Pokemon, the game I care about the most. Also um, the game you're best at. Actually, that's not true, because I think I care about Ace Attorney a little more. But... Um, mm. Him. 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 Anyway, uh, we have to be careful because it keeps focusing on that. So oh. focus on us. Focus uh, on my face. Which is the problem we have with the last one. Anyway, Splatoon 3. Um, I've been playing Splatoon 3. They made a lot of amazing quality of life updates. So if you had problems with Splatoon 2, play Splatoon 3. Okay, seriously, though. They made a lot of really good updates. Like, um, I don't like the new weapons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot any of, of them? <laughs> all of them are bad? I don't like any. I don't think I've played a single new weapon that I like. That That's on me, though. <laughs> that's not true. The Splatana, the, splat, sp the Katana thing, terrible weapon. Why they added that? I don't know. I don't think I've ever been killed by one of those. Ever. Like, and I've, I, like, I, it's not that I don't come, not that nobody plays it. I just don't think you can be good at it. 
It's it's not a good weapon. I don't know. Maybe there are people out there that are good at it. Maybe it's good and ranked or something, and I just haven't come across people yet. Um, but in my few weeks of play, I don't think anybody with that goddamn katana has killed me once. It's a bad weapon. Anyway, the bow and arrow is kind of weird, too. Um, but that one at least has like an interesting people like, have killed spread. me with that one people yeah. have killed me that that one is purely a skill issue on my part yeah. um, pe- people have killed me with it I've tried it though and I'm like it's one of the only weapons I think that I've played that I'm like how are you doing this like I'm somebody who likes to play every single weapon if I'm besides the charger if I'm too good at a weapon I'm bored with it like yeah. I don't play with random guns I don't play with the, the splatter shot or whatever because it's fucking boring you know? And the new ticket system's been bugging you too because of that, right? Oh yeah, the weapon selection. So they changed weapon selection, so you can no longer or like weapon buying. It used to be that you would unlock them as you went with levels, and then you could just buy them, right? So mm-hmm. as long as you had the money and you had unlocked it at that level, you could buy it. Now you get one ticket per level, and you can use the tickets to unlock weapons, right? But you're unlocking more weapons than you're getting tickets, basically. Um, so like you have to pick and choose more. Is all I'm trying to say. You have to pick and choose more, and I don't like that. I like being able to like play one round with one weapon and play another round with another one and play another round with another one and I can't do that because at level 10 I only have 10 weapons but you also have to use three ticket. I think the goal is for you to get like really good with like a couple weapons. Yeah, but I don't want to do that. Up. I like I, which is why I like salmon run so much. I love salmon run because they just throw a random weapon at you and they're like best of luck. Um anyway, other quality of like that was really loud. <laughs> That's fine. You've slammed the table a whole bunch of times while you were talking. That's too. fine. Uh, other quality of life updates. You can now um, move around while it's matchmaking, which I really like. You can move around while it's matchmaking. Uh, you can skip the the whole like uh, idols talking to you at the beginning of the stage announcements. You can skip the stage announcements. And it just like plays in the top corner. Yeah, that was – oh, my God. That was one of the most annoying things. I, You just sit there and you're like, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stop talking. I love Pearl and Marina, but stop talking. Um what else? I'm trying to think of what other like quality of life updates there were. I don't know. Um, uh, Salmon Run is 24 seven now. Uh, but that's really nice. Yes, I also really like that. It was really annoying that like you'd yeah, be like you had to wait for Salmon Run to be on to play it. Yes, for people who didn't play Splatoon two, you had to wait. They would have like six or twelve hours on, six hours off or something, or twenty four hours on, six hours off. It was just a huge letdown when you open Splatoon and there's no Salmon Run. You'd be like, well, I don't fucking want to play then because I can't. Anyway, um, if if you're not familiar with Splatoon, Salmon Run is If you're not is, f- is familiar with Splatoon, leave. <laughs> Just leave the whole podcast. You're not welcome here. <laughs> you're not a kid or a squid. You, you'll never be a squid. Get out. Yeah. Um, um, Splatfest, though. They have Splatfest happening, was happening now. It just ended. Um, by the time this is out, it's not a spoiler team. Fun won. And you were Unless the people fun. on Twitter lied to me. Uh, I haven't checked myself yet. Would would somebody do that? Just, Just go on the go internet, on the internet and, tell, and lies? tell lies? Anyway, according to my Twitter feed this morning before we filmed this podcast, Team Fun won, in which case, big man for life, I, I. And um, what, if, what if they didn't win? What if you look like a huge jackass right then now? Then I'm going to cross out who won and write fun. <laughs> Just just break into <laughs> Nintendo. Yeah. Go on their servers. Break and... into you using the key that my uncle who works at Nintendo has. <laughs> I'm gonna break in. You know the one that he's been saving since since they found Mew under the truck. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so that also I say anyway a lot. It's not that I'm rushing anyone ahead. That's just my brain switching. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Some annoying people say like every five seconds or um every five seconds. I say anyway every five seconds. Anyway. Anyway. (laughs) Anyway, you're built different. I am. Um, So, yeah, Splatfest just happened, and they added these really interesting things called tricolor battles, which are two versus two versus four, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so. Yeah, two versus two two versus versus two versus four. So it's, if there's three teams, it's. Whatever team is in the lead, and two and two, I think. Okay, so so I only so I only did a few of them, and the problem is, every single time people disconnected, hmm. every single time. I think I actually only completed one, which is a feature I don't like. There's a new feature I don't like. If somebody disconnects too early, they end the round. The way they used to do it is that you wouldn't get penalized. They'd still let the round go. Um, and you'd still have a chance to win or get completely bodied, and then the team that had a disconnect doesn't lose anything if they lost, right? Mm-hmm. Which is 
is kind of fun. You still get a chance to get points because you get points if you lose. You know, you still get a chance to, to do stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but now they made it where if someone disconnects early enough, they just end it. And you so you don't get any points. If you had a drink ticket or something, you lose that one drink ticket and stuff. And it just ends. And that's what kept happening with the tricolor battles. And, like, I would I would prefer to, to like, lose and get completely wrecked and at least get my 300 points or whatever of you tried then get kicked out. So I didn't even get to finish many of my tricolor bat battles, which is why I don't fully understand them. Um, but, so yeah, it seems to be two versus two, and the whole point is that even though the other two are different colors, all that matters is they're beating you. Okay, so so the the four person team has to the four have person a team is the winning is the one winning the slap battle, and they have to get a greater per percentage of coverage than both the other teams combined. Yes. Uh, well, where? they're also dropping these like for some reason it's like dropping these these beacons that that spray ink if you don't defend. It's actually like an like I can see like Splatoon's mechanics translating to that mm -hmm. kind of like th three way battle pretty easily because like it's all about percentage covered so like yeah that makes sense that whichever of the so i'm guessing whichever of the the two player teams covers more than the other uh gets more points i don't know i was because i was team fun i was always on the defending team because we were winning the whole time not that i was on any teams that were winning oh my god i don't know what it is about splatfest but Just, like i have never had more like losing streaks than I have during Splatfest, even when my team wins. Like the losing streaks I get on on there, and the the people who don't know th the purpose of the game is to cover the ground with ink. Just well, yeah. I mean, Splatfest like, is like the event that brings like people into play, so it like makes I, sense I guess, that those like, casuals who just want to do PvP. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about Splatfest, but brings out the worst players yet somehow i always end up on the winning team that's not true <laughs> that's not true <laughs> that's not true at all okay team Callie's a winner in my heart every time and team pearl is team cali by extension and team big man is, is big man i i i big I. man <laughs> um i don't like the new idols sorry that's fair cut no the loud. cameras i think no their loud. catchphrase sucks the the um catch you later yeah they just go Catch you later. It's which definitely is like a step down from stay fresh. From, from stay fresh. Yeah, and, that sounds um, like a catchphrase. I don't remember what they do with their arms, but don't get cooked, stay off the hook. That's like a really great catchphrase. Like stay fresh is like, you know, it's fun. You would be kind of weird if you said that in a conversation, right? Yeah. Don't get cooked, stay off the hook is like, right? And then catch you later. Catch you later is like, like. like I guess catch is nominally it, it, it related is, it to is, fishing. It is. It's like, still a fish pun, right? I get it. It's a fish pun. But, like, it's, you would say that in a normal conversation. But, yeah, catch is just a word that people use all the time. Yeah. You like, know, when I say to somebody, when I say it as a splendid version, I'm like, hey, stay fresh. They're like, stay fresh. But, like, catch you later is like, okay, bye. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> okay, sound bye. like a Splatoon-specific anyway, um, thing. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I that's, feel that, you. That, that's all. That's all. I just – I big man. I like big man. But, yeah, they are my least favorite of the three aisles. I don't want them, like, gone or redone. But I will say this is the first time I've been, like. Not in love. I'm not standing. I'm not there being, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that will change when you play the single player? No. No? No. <laughs> no. All right. So that is what we've been doing with our week. That's it. I hope I didn't ramble on about Splatoon too long. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the small news first. Aniplex Online Fest. They announced a whole bunch of anime. Should we? Uh, we didn't watch it. We were asleep. Yeah. <laughs> but we <laughs> saw the news from it, which is the same thing. Um, some highlights. Uh, Misfit at Demon King Academy Season 2 is happening. I'm very excited to see more of No Punch Man. Um, oh, that's that one? Okay, I recognized the name, and I knew it was something that you had talked about. The, the, okay, it's, so the no, many. it's the No Punch Man one. Okay. I, I, I understand. Like, like They're all the king at something school. Or, or the, the irregular school. at Magic High School. Or the, the the classroom. Like, all of the school, and they all all the dudes look the same, too. All the guys look the same. Super, too. <laughs> all um, of them had Kirito Syndrome. Yeah, <laughs> but but none of them are as cool as Anos Voldigode, who can kill people 
with his heartbeat, literally just heartbeat at them so hard that they explode. And uh, in in several fights, he's got his uh, uh, just civilian fan idol unit backing him up by singing his theme song as he fights. God, I love that stupid. So um, it's coming back. Um, yeah. Fate. Fate strange fake is what they called it or fate yeah fate strange fake we don't know anything about fate yeah i i th- not i i wouldn't say we don't know anything i'm a fate zero casual i've seen several of the anime um but beyond that yeah we yeah. don't recognize anything <laughs> be this... honest um the extent yeah. of my fate knowledge is the cute girls in fate go that's the extent of a lot but you know what fate, fate people knowledge. i'm happy for you I'm happy for you, you know? Like, like that you're getting your anime. I'm happy for you. So I think it's only going to be one episode, which was like that. Lord Elmoloy's Case one. Files? Yes. Um, but, I'm, but that one came back. Like, they did, like, the one fancy episode and then came back a few seasons later with a with, real. With, like, a full season. Yeah, so, so. I'm, that's probably what's going to happen with this one. Who mm-hmm. knows? But you know what, Fate guys? I'm happy for you. Yes, I am also happy for the Fate fans that they got an anime. That never happens for Fate fans. Ever. I'm so glad. You know, like, it's such an obscure series, and it's really nice that they're that they're getting but, some representation. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, they, they showed new uh, footage of Mashal, and it kind of just looks like any Shonen Jump anime. I'm... I hope it's good. Yeah, you like the source material, right? I like the manga a lot, yeah. I It, it took a while to grow on me because it kind of felt like a, just a low-rent uh, One Punch Man at first. But it's One Punch Man at Hogwarts would be the, the premise. But, like, it, it's kind of come into its own. Um, I like the characters a lot. It's – it's and, and the the, like, action shots are really good. But, like – like most shonen yeah. stuff, but it, but it's really carried by like its art style and sense of humor. So I'm worried that the anime adaptation just won't convey that, especially since Shueisha is clearly putting their money into other franchises that are better returns on investment right now. Um, you know, like like I've got a feeling that it's going to be a second stringer to Spy Family and Chainsaw Man. You know, yeah. but it's like I'm still, you know, hopeful. You're hopeful. You're hopeful because you hopeful. like the source material. Yeah. But the trailer didn't other, really. There's... Also, there is a near automata anime coming near in automata or automata. I'm pretty sure every time you we say it one way or the other, somebody's like, um, it's automata or no, um, it's automata. Yeah, I think it's automata, but um, no, automata, whatever. <laughs> Me with Arceus or Arceus. I don't care and I don't know. Automata. Do, do, in that order. Do, 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 in that order. I don't care. Automata. Do, 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 do. Automata. Do, do. Automata. <laughs> anyway, um, Tubi's ass is going to be. Tubi's butt. Tubi's. Tubi's Tubi is going to be uh, in anime form. Yes. And that's that's all. This is great. That's yeah, great. That's, that's real great. <laughs> yep. Yep. Tubi's butt. To be is to be is gonna be be. <laughs> <sighs> it sure do be. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. And then last but not least, uh, they we have, also... nothing, we have nothing to say about the near anime other than the fact that we're looking forward to it. I hope Yogotaro is involved because everything that he's involved with is great. It, it's probably the greatest. If he is involved, then it's probably going to have a completely different plot from the game, contradicted on like several oh, levels. Wait, wait, wait. But also, like. For the near people here, if there are near people here, I have a question. Whatever came of that, like, uh, that, like, not drama, but the whole. Out- not outrage either. The people were getting all up about. Um, you mean the, the recently uncovered. Secret yes, that thing. The, like, church thing. Area? Whatever happened with that? Because I saw it on my feed and stuff when it was happening, but because I'm not at, like, a near gamer i'm not a near gamer um i never saw the outcome of it like i just remember people were like the guy went back and he uploaded a new clip and that was the last i heard of it the near the near experts were like doing their calculations on whether or not it was real or if this was like one of the a secret that wasn't mentioned there was like a certain amount of of near secrets that like yoko taro confirmed that that existed i think was how it happened um please again if somebody knows something about near just tell us and last something we do know something about 
Funny Girl Senpai. Funny Girl Senpai. Finally getting a season two. Um, I, yeah, I mean, we don't. I'm glad to see my Sakurajima again. That'll yeah, be fun. Yeah. Yep. Um, the whole crew is. Yeah, I like Funny Girl Senpai a lot. Um, unfortunately, I haven't read it because, in my opinion, they dropped the ball a lot on that release. Um. I watched. I remember we watched it. I really loved it. As soon as it was done, I was ready for more. And I like. I figured it would be at least a couple months till the light novel came out, right? Like, you know, now they're like releasing the light novels in English even before the anime is coming out, which is crazy. Yeah. But like at the time, you know, it was it was it was up tw- in the it was air. Twenty eighteen that, that it came yeah. out, right? Yeah. Mm. It was. It was twenty. No, it was twenty eighteen. I googled it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, yeah so yeah. So like twenty nineteen was the last right, year anything so, happened. So <laughs> at the time. Um, Right, I was like, I'm going to go look it up and see when it's releasing, and it had no release date. I was like, oh. Anyway, it came out two years after the anime ended. Yeah. Volume it, 1, which is still what the anime covered. Yeah, and like, they, 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 it took three volumes to get past what the anime covered. So the anime would have covered three volumes because there were three distinct arcs in it. Um, and that means that, like, two years later, they were... Two, two releases behind where the anime was. And by that time, the movie had come out, so they were four volumes ahead. Um, I don't know where they're at now uh, in terms of releases. But we didn't end up following it because it took two years. right? So again, we don't know what went into that. right? There could have been some kind of roadblock or whatever. We don't know the behind-the-scenes part. But I was so disappointed that it took two years for that to come out. And yeah, like Your, we, we your hype it. died. Yeah, we have it here, and I haven't read it. You know, just, maybe I will once the new season comes out. That'll get me back into it. But yeah, that was like a a, a, a mid two thousands moment of them, or you know, an early twenty tens moment of them. Yeah, to yeah, release where there's the just source material in English two years after the extremely hit anime too. Like yeah, it, it was really popular. Like it wasn't even an underperforming anime or something where they were like, "Fuck this, we're putting it on the back burner" because it was a money dump. Like, maybe so. Like all I can think is like maybe the rights were in dispute at the time that that uh, happened, yeah, yeah, or so, like like. They didn't expect it to take off in English-speaking markets. But even then, two years seems like a crazy amount of time. Yeah. Like, that. The only, you're right that it could have been a copyright thing or something. But, like, even for we weren't expecting it, two years is, like, a long-ass time. But we don't know. Again, we don't know what goes into that pipeline. So, uh, What's the new title? Rascal Does Not Dream of the Backpack Kid. The new titles are Rascal Does Not Dream of a Sister Venturing Out, which would be about his younger sister. Mm-hmm. Um, and Rascal Does Not Dream of a Knapsack Kid, which... I'll assume is is Young Mai because it shows Young Mai in the poster. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm assuming that first one is about his sister, which they covered in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of. Um, I mean. Speaking of which, can I get something off of my chest about the movie? Mm-hmm. We got to see the movie at Anime Expo. Yeah. Um, that was the only time we've ever used our uh, guest gets a spot without waiting in line privileges. And I still feel guilty about that. Yeah, that it's was such years. a small room. It's been years, and I still feel guilty about the fact that, like, so what happened was Jeff had his panel, and then directly afterwards, like, was the premiere, like yeah. five minutes later, was the, so anybody who went to Jeff's panel couldn't go see the Bunny Girl Senpai yeah, movie. Yeah, like, and I still feel guilty that we I'm got sorry, so guys. Sad. Like, it's been, it's been, like, three or four, three years probably at least yeah. since then, and the only time we've used our, our guest gets something special privileges, and I haven't recovered from it. So if I you didn't get to see the movie, too. if you didn't get to see the movie because you were at Jeff's Anime Expo panel. <laughs> we're very sorry. It's a good movie. You should watch it. It's, it's a on good movie. Roll now, no, it's it? not. It's not available anywhere. <laughs> Why? Aniplex. <laughs> Aniplex? Yeah. It, I mean, you know what we mean when we say it's not available anywhere. Yeah. Check out our last podcast to find out what we mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a reference to you saying piracy is yes, okay. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I understand. <laughs> the joke, the is, joke is. The joke is that you said piracy was okay. So <laughs> <laughs> if there was anything else, I think there was like a couple of small things that we, that um, they like. Did they announce some new stuff, like an adaptation of like Loving they, Yamada at level 999, um, which is about a girl who breaks up with her boyfriend and then finds like a, a, a meets a new guy in an MMO and he's the top player but he only cares about being the top player and she's trying to win his heart 
I, so there's a couple things, but um, that was the stuff that stood out and I figured was worth writing down because we could talk about it. And Yazzie is distracted by Burger. Burger's doing the thing again. So, so uh, one of our cats, Burger, specifically likes clawing food out of her food dish, putting it under the mat, and then digging it out from under the mat later. later. Yeah, she, she'll, she'll put it, she'll pull some out, and she'll put it under the mat, and then like 20 minutes later, come back and fish it out from under the mat. <laughs> like she's saving it for later. But. Anyway, I was just Which you might have to do with these absolute fat asses. <laughs> I, I just bugged Junk Rat. Yeah, actually, let me take a picture really fast of what our little setup looks like. Wave, Steffi. Okay, we'll put that on screen so you can see what's the, the proximity between us and Junk's fat ass. Yeah. Um, anyway, last, last moving last. on to... Uh, <laughs> uh, right, if there was anything else we missed. There was that level 999 thing. Sorry, I got distracted by cats. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember anything else off the top of my head. Yeah, they had some like visuals or something for other stuff. Yeah. That was like, um, but yeah. Funny your senpai. So the other medium piece of news is Japan is reopening oh. to tourists. That's it. That's the news. That is the news. We're real excited to go back. Finally, it's been it's been two years. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to wait until the new year to go back. With probably. I I mean I'd like to go back sooner, but it. Yeah. You know the wor how work is on YouTube. Yeah, unfortunately, um, you know I can't. We can't complain yeah. because also everybody else is working their asses off in the holiday season. Um, but, but yeah, this yeah is, unfortunately, these three nice. months are when would be money nice gets to go made. back for my birthday. It would be not. Oh, God. Are you doing that to me on the podcast? The whole fucking comment section is just gonna be like Jeff. It would be nice to go for my birthday. Day. It would be really nice to go back for your birthday. <laughs> even even if your eyes don't do it to me now, the fucking <laughs> podcast audience is. Gonna... I know. What do you think I'm doing? And you're editing it, so you're gonna probably put some fucking sad music. <gasps> That's a really good idea. <laughs> Damn it! Ah! In the arms of the uh, I really want to go back for your birthday too. <laughs> I, I really do. Yeah. But, um, we um, went for our very first Japan trip together was on for my birthday. Yes. Um, that was... Wasn't my first Japan trip. Sorry. But our um, first I actually, one together. if people don't know that, I did a year in Japan as an exchange in high school. So that was pretty pretty neat. Um, yeah. So it wasn't my first time in Japan, but it was our first time together and Jeff's first time. Together. And your first time in Tokyo because you yes. got shunted well, off to I the mean, boonies. Well, I mean, I had a day <laughs> in Tokyo when I first went, but I was also... 16 and wasn't allowed to go out on my own so yeah um but yeah it was it was great so we'd hope to go back yeah so if you're not aware of the situation they were locked down for longer than pretty much any country yeah. um, um and then do i have yeah 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 and then they uh opened it up but only to people on tours from uh, very strict tours accredited the, tour guides you could only do the things on your tour well no yeah so yeah, first First, it was with a tour guide, and then they were like, okay, well, not with a tour guide. But you still have to do your itinerary, and if you don't— Yeah, you still couldn't do what you wanted. Yeah. You could only stay at certain hotels and only— And, like, that's going to yeah. be fucking expensive. So I, who knows how many people did it, but it wasn't worth it because you'd have to stay at the, the hotels that are charging up the ass because they're the only hotels you can stay out, stay yeah. at, and you'd have to go to these— only these these accredited events or, or tourist destinations you can't like be like okay we went to that now let's go spend the other half of the day doing what we want like yeah. so it was pointless to go so yeah we would uh, jokes aside about going on my birthday <laughs> uh yeah it's pretty cool if you want to go to japan go to japan yeah we're we're gonna go back sometime eventually. maybe for your birthday but probably sometime january february um <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Moving on. Uh, Moving the on. big news of the week. I'm pulling it up here. Is um, Crunchyroll? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, we know. Yeah. Epic, epic Crunchyroll moment. Ep epic corporate America moment. But um, um, yeah, so the voice actor for Mob in Mob Psycho 100, as well as the ADR director, the ADR director, and I think several other members of the cast. No, have, not not of that cast, uh, but uh, of other Crunchyroll dub casts and Funimation dub casts have been recast because, uh, as a condition of uh, what's his name, Kyle, I don't know. Uh, 
Kyle McCarley. Kyle McCarley. So Kyle McCarley, the voice actor for uh, Mob. Uh, you know, kind of an integral character and Kind voice. of. Consider- yeah, he's considering- kind of a minor character in the Reagan you know, Arataka show. Co- um, considering it's also season three. Yeah. It's- not yeah, so, so people have been used to this voice for, for you know, two full seasons now. And, and and it has been hailed as an incredible dub for two whole seasons. But anyway. And now it's going to be completely different. It, it, like, completely different without the ADR director. Because Kyle uh, wanted a – he wanted Crunchyroll to talk to the actors' union SAG-AFTRA. He uh, said to Crunchyroll uh, – so they offered him a union rate. Right, like they were like, we'll we'll pay you what you would be paid on a union gig, even though this is not a union gig. Um, and he was like, okay, but for me to come back, I want you to talk to SAG-AFTRA. Uh, there's been like a push in the voice acting uh, community to unionize since uh, the the Sony um, Crunchyroll Funimation merger, because you know now most anime dubbing is handled by one big company. Um, the elements of competition that allowed for like, you know, people to get better deals are just gone now. Um, and like unionization is kind of necessary and like, I mean, it is, it's always been necessary, but it's like extremely necessary now. Um, and yeah, I think they're making a really big mistake. Uh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> um, but so um, Ben Diskin, who is m- most notably for for everybody, the voice of Haida from from Agretzko, Agretzko, yeah, shed a little bit of light. I'll read it out. Um, he put a Twitter thread up um, talking about um, th- the opposite end of the spectrum, which is how Netflix. I, we didn't know this, but they're surprisingly really great with how they treat their dub actors. Um, So I'll read you his thread real fast, which is that dubbing actors will be paid for a minimum of three hours of work. Uh, Dubbing actors uh, who have vocally stressful sessions, including yelling, shouting, screaming, battle cries, creature sounds, unnatural voice textures, extensive whispering, etc. for Netflix anime and other Netflix dubs are capped out at two hours. But still get paid for the full three. And a 25%. So they're paid with a 25% premium and capped out at two hours. Dubbing actors for Spanish dubs will at last be paid on par with English-speaking dub performers for Netflix anime and other Netflix dubs, which I, I mean, I had no idea they were even paid, that they were paid even less than English voice actors. Who already do not get great rates. Um, and then he, edit, he ended it on the fact that Netflix approached our union of their own accord to for, form that agreement. And it, it, like, they already had a deal. And they came to them with a better deal. Yes. And Netflix came to the union with this, which is like, you know, nobody had to push them for it. Nobody had to be like, what the fuck, guys? They were proactive about it to, to protect them. And yeah, so Ben goes on to say that that as an anime fan, that watching on Netflix, um, watching dubs on Netflix, watching their dubs really helps support that idea that it's a good idea but and stuff. And it yeah, is. Yeah. They just watch Netflix dubs because they get treated well. I mean, the quality of the Edge Runners dub is a testament incredible. to, I mean, to I, how that... Agretzko has an incredible dub, too. Like, yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to think of their other stuff, but, like... I, 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 There have been, like, a few Netflix dubs where I would say that it was bad, but, like... I don't know. Knowing... The, the FMA movie dub. That's the last bad Netflix dub that I watched, but... um. Yeah, no, like, like, man, that kid got paid for three hours. Fuck yeah! <laughs> good, good for that dub director's kid for that one line. I, I don't think that one was union. I, I, I there's no way that was a union <laughs> dub. But, um, but yeah, so, so, Netflix did that, I think, because they understand one. SAG-AFTRA is really fucking powerful. Like, like most. Oh my god, they're going in on Crunchyroll on Twitter right now. Yeah, no, they are bodying them on social media. As they should be. Um, and like one, they're hugely influential. Like, they're. I mean, every single celebrity that you can think of is a member of SAG-AFTRA. Mm-hmm. So like, um, they've got a huge amount of power in Hollywood in general because like, I. Either you work with them or you don't get to work with any big name actors, mm-hmm. right? And 
as anime dubbing is becoming like a bigger business in America, um, they've finally taken interest. And I like, I think I legitimately think that Crunchyroll is making a mistake, like not just doing something bad that is hurting voice actors, which is just um, kind of how the whole dub industry has worked for years. But um, like, I think they're making a huge mistake by not playing ball because like, Netflix went to SAG-AFTRA and offered them a deal because they're that powerful and they want to be on good terms with them. If all of the good dub actors sign up with SAG-AFTRA, Crunchyroll could find themselves like without access to like all of the major talent in the anime industry pretty easily. Here's the thing, it's... though. I don't know if they will do it. That's the crazy kind of thing is that if there's any company I can see and I wouldn't have said that like five or six years ago yeah but with Sony in five control? or six years ago yeah and and like kind of knowing who's yeah. that that I mean it yeah. I, I don't know of course I want them to right and I will be extremely happy if they do but like I you know when the seven seas thing happened right I was like eventually they will they have yeah. to give in they have to Right, yeah. and they did. Uh, they did give in, and they negotiated a union contract. Uh, Very good, but or but, at least they announced that they were sitting down to. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, but, Sony won't even let SAG after in the door for a meeting. Yeah, and, and like, I, it's, I, I will be disappointed, but not shocked if they actually keep fighting this. Because the thing is, like, union culture doesn't really exist in Japan the way that it does in I mean, America or like at all, and like. Yeah, I firmly believe that most, and again, my, maybe we'll get some people angry with this one, but comments are nice. Um, I think that anybody who's anti-union has never been in one mm -hmm. because, yeah, I, that's all. That's all. Yeah. I think that anybody who is anti-union simply has not had the protection of one yeah. because uh, like, I've I, only had one union job in my life, and that 20 bucks a month was so worth it. Like, that 20 bucks a month, there were some unfair things about it, right? Um, uh, for anybody like, who's like never your, been your hours well no it was the the unfair part to, in my opinion at least at the time was the um seniority thing mm -hmm. was that um when it comes to things like time off they based on seniority yeah. the union does yeah. right so you so, could never get a holiday off yeah i mean i was working at a cbs at the time i was even though i was um, like a, a, a a shift leader i did not get a single holiday off because the person who was hired before me was hired three years before and the person before that was five years before me, right? Yeah. So, like, I until they hired a couple new people, which was not going to happen because they only hired people every couple of years because it was a small store, I had every single holiday on. on, every single one. Like, that was a downside, right? Because that was the union rules, right? Was that the longer you're there, you get the full power of, I want every single, every single Christmas, New Year's, everything off, right? Which, but at, on the flip side, when I got so sick, that I had a chest infection that my the, the like was was making it like I I think was on the edge of pneumonia. It was really bad. I was really sick for a couple of weeks, and they weren't letting me have time off. I had to go to the union, and I called them, and they were like, "Why the fuck didn't you call us earlier? What the fuck?" And my union rep went to the store. He wow. went to my store, and he said, "What the fuck are you guys doing?" He was like, "We could ream you up the ass for this," and then they gave me my time off to get better. But like. Yeah. That's my story. Um, I think that anybody who is truly anti-union has never been in one. Yeah. No, I, like, there are issues. Like, uh, SAG-AFTRA has yes. problems. Yes, like, that's like, not to be like, it's perfect. And we don't know about how SAG-AFTRA works because we've never been in that one. I was in a, you know, it was yeah. a local Los Angeles union. But, but um, yeah, like, like for example, um, it is very hard to get a job as an actor at all in, like, any kind of pro professional production if you're not a member of SAG-AFTRA already, and the only way to become a member of SAG-AFTRA is with sufficient credits to... Yes, so you have to work. I looked it up um, because somebody was using that yeah. argument against it. They were like, well, what it, you know, the, what it, you know, it makes... Some people aren't qualified to do that, um, but you just have to be part of one of their... From, from what I understand, mm -hmm. you have to just have a certain amount of time on a project that they, that they did a negotiation for. And mm -hmm. once you have taken part in a project, it was like th two hours or something yeah. of work on a project that they had a agreement on, then you can join them formally. 
Okay. Yeah. Or spend a year in another union. That makes sense. But like, like, yeah, that that's like a notorious thing about Hollywood is that if you're not in SAG-AFTRA, it's hard to get uh, gigs. And if yeah, you d- can't get gigs, you can't get in SAG-AFTRA. There's um, downsides, but I find a lot of the downsides are personal and all of the upsides are everybody. Yeah, yeah. Like union-wide and yeah. like joining SAG-AFTRA will probably make the path up for – new aspiring voice actors a little harder but in the long run their careers are going to be like protected yeah their they, they'll have careers protected. yeah um, like that that voice protection one is huge separate from just the payment yeah right the fact that they cannot force them to work over two hours on something that's that's damaging to their voice right that is their whole career is their voice right and to to you know so yeah, no, that's anyway. that's really important. Like, like actually protecting their health. Yeah, it's going to um, give them a longer career because they're not having the the threat of no longer having work held over their head because they're not straining their voice. Yeah. Like, and and like you know, I'm not I'm not going to be like Crunchyroll evil over this because like most American companies are anti-union due to like fiduciary responsibilities and a whole bunch of other shit with how American business works. Um, Like they have to pursue profits at all costs and like, but also like, the fuck are you doing? Yeah. The fuck are you doing? But, but like there's a reason that Netflix came to SAG-AFTRA to make a deal because they are going to be in control of the dubbing industry. Eventually now that they've taken interest, they're, they're they're a very very powerful union and like in the long term by not playing ball sony could be seriously hurting their ability to create good dubs yeah um and like i i really hope they reverse course on this and i hope they do it soon because also voice like character voices are the most important things in animation like they they're the defining feature of the character as much as how they look and how they move and to change that midway through the finale of a show is just a huge kick in the teeth to the audience it's going to take a lot of people out of the story um you know like i've fallen when i was when i was younger and i mainly watched anime dubbed i fell off anime because the dub actors changed um it's just yeah it's it's really jarring and bad and Nobody's winning in this, but uh, I think that's all we have to say about this. Yeah, yeah, I um, it's disappointing to see. Yeah, and, and and I hope they get their shit together. And yet at the same time, I will be not shocked if they continue to fight this and they just keep ignoring it. I, I unfortunately will not be shocked. Yeah, I, I the way they have been since Sony. All right. So with the news of the day out of the way, it is time Ooh, that was for Yazzie's rabbit hole. Na, 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 na. So we'll put the videos that we're going to watch on the screen. I'll show you guys. So I guess I'll introduce Karen's Diner first. In theory, Karen's Diner is a good idea. It's fun, a fun, fun idea. Fun right? little. Nothing wrong with a gimmick. Um, restaurant, right? Yeah, we 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 love a good gimmick restaurant. We, um, every, everybody I mean, loves a good gimmick restaurant. For real, though, like they're fun. Vegas is built on gimmick restaurants. Yep, everybody loves the soup Nazi. But like Karen, so Karen's Diner, the premise originally was a, a diner where all of the servers are Karens, right? You go there and they're not nice. They're 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 bitches, right? So like like <laughs> the whole idea is you go there and it's the opposite of what a server should be like. But like. It worked at first. Um, it worked at their like main location. I like. I feel like we should show a couple good ones just so people know that like we're not totally against the idea, right? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll pause it here. We're not going to be able to watch the good ones because I can't find them. But I'm going to put a funny one here. Pause. Funny. What do you fucking think? One of them is literally called Aqua Aerobics, bitch. It takes five seconds of brain fucking power to figure that one out, and that's. It's 
sorry, were you waiting for me? <laughs> oh my god, how embarrassing. Name of the booking? Jemana. You're fucking late, Jemana. <laughs> They've lost the plot. So, I'm sure at their original one, it's still on on plot, right? When when in their first few months, I think they opened in like spring or something. Um, and in their first few months, when they were inviting all of the blue check marks and stuff like that, and they were like really going on essentially a script, it was funny. It was like funny, right? It was like, oh, I'm taking my my friend or my relative to Karen's diner, and they don't know what's gonna happen. And they get there, and the server's like, what do you want? And they're like. You know, and the server like you know tosses the menu on the table, and they're like, "Hurry it up, right?" And so, and it was funny. And now we're kind of crossing into like uh, borderline Stanford Prison ins- experiment vibes. <laughs> yeah, for real, um, like because like, they've they have opened multiple more locations. Just so you know, normally I won't know as much about these rabbit holes. I will be experiencing them with you, but uh, for, for this first one, yeah, um, I did show Jeff to try to decide. If it was worth it. We're going to put the one that sparked this whole discussion of whether or not Karen's Diner has gone too far. We will put it on the screen now. We'll watch it together, okay? Went to Karen's Diner, and safe to say, I probably won't come back. I know they're paid to be mean to you, but it was a little too hectic. They were making offensive comments about people's appearances. They told my friend she needed to brush her hair. Like, how mean is that? They told my other friend that she was too old, and they threw cups at us. They got this group of older ladies to leave, like, stand up and leave. They said to leave over the mic, and they had an alarm blaring, and these ladies actually got up and left. I'm not sure if they paid or not, but... The food was okay, but get this. They told this guy that he had a receding hairline, and this is what he did. What's your one thing your fucking sign says? No body shame. And that fucking fat bitch has a right to... No body shame! That was what kind of started the conversation on TikTok about whether or not they've gone too far. I mean, they're breaking their own rules. Yes, so let me show you guys the rules. I have this pulled up. So their rules are... No racist, sexist, homophobic, or ableist comments or slurs, right? And the whole idea is that this is back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. Um, No body shaming, no sexual harassment, uh, no damage or vandalism and throwing food. Keep your food and drinks on your table, okay? Um, And then they say at the bottom, even though this is Karen's Diner, um, OHS rules still apply. We are a functioning restaurant, so do not interfere with the hospitality process. Just sit down, shut up, eat your food, and bring on the banter. So, they openly say there, no, the big one is no body shaming, right? Yeah, yeah. And it seems as if one of their locations, specifically the Brisbane location, um, has given up on that rule. Completely. Completely. Um, so, as you saw in that video, they not only were commenting on her friend's hair saying she needs to brush it, um, but they put a bag over her friend's head because she was too ugly, they said. Um, and that they said, you need to cry on the way home. And that's what the bag said. The bag said, I'm going to cry on the way home. And they put it over her head because she was too ugly. Wow. Um, and then that, uh, that guy with the receding hairline comment who completely lost it. And I understand. I mean, some of the comments were like, well, th- what do you expect going there? Not that. But like they crossed the lines with their own rules, right? Yeah. The, yeah. the guy went there and expected people to be sassy bitches, not to get straight up made fun of. Yeah. Right? And so for, I have another one. you can't help. Yeah. So I have another one for us to watch, which is somebody else's experience. That one time at Karen's Diner, I got called beef slimming. Um, can I please get the Karen seasonal waffle bowl and the Nutty Karen? You do realize that dessert is fucking huge. I doubt you're going to eat it. You look like you're bulimic. <laughs> you might. I was wearing. But then they clapped back at me and they said, you barely fit your shirt. Um, For context, I was wearing a cute, like, white butterfly top. Like, it it was white and it had, like, a little butterfly on the middle. And for context as well, I used to suffer from an ED. And I still have those issues with my body image, but it's it's been way better now. Yeah, that's that's why they have the rule. Yeah, exactly. So, So, like, this person who we just had on screen said as well they experienced at the same location mind you it seems the sydney location i don't know how many locations they have they might have them around the world i i don't care um the sydney location is i think the first one um and that one seems fine but this brisbane location this was the same one this happened at um and yeah as you saw they with this person as well sharing their experience just said she didn't fit her clothes that's not right 
so but like that's the kind of thing like if you're if you have an ed that's that might like ruin eating out for you for years right that's so fucked up so the problem is what the fuck is happening at the brisbane one okay so the problem to me seems to be like this isn't something you can franchise, but, but it went viral and they tried to franchise yeah, it to make so like, money off of they've it. They've crossed. This is not what Karens are like, for starters, right? Yeah. A, a Karen is not just a flat out bully who's like, you're fat. No, a Karen right? is somebody who, who like Thinks has they, an idea of how it's supposed to be and refuses to let it be any other way. Yeah. Like, so I think their big failure here is that they hired random people instead of for example actors right yeah if they hired people who were actors right like like people who were just trying to break out into the acting thing and needed a job until then right people who were good at maintaining a character yeah that would be more successful and that might be what they leaned towards in their first location which is why it worked so well but they're the like like these I mean, people are just mean that's yeah, it. They, it just, is just mean. They're just mean. And I mean, this, like, if they did lean toward actors, it's actually an ideal job for an aspiring actor exactly. to do on the side. Right? So they've crossed over from, I think they've crossed over from, like, sassy in, into just being bullies. It's also not clever. And that's, like... Yeah, yeah. Like, and that's what I mean by it's kind of, kind of like, given Stanford prison experiment vibes, where, like, it started with people going to experience this thing. And now it's just power tripping bullies yeah, who right. run it. So I'm going to show you one more really fast. This is just my own minor nitpick where they crossed the line. Mm hmm. Okay, let's see. I'd be pissed if this were me. Yeah. So, like, that was funny in theory until he spilled it on her shirt and walked away. But like that, that girl just got chocolate milkshake all over her white shirt, yeah, and he just walked away. He just walked away. Like, yeah, we we've lost the plot of the movie here, right? Yeah. With what a Karen is, and they're just kind of bullying people, and it gets worse in July. Um, the same location, the Brisbane one, called a dad who was there with his daughter a pedophile, and asked her if she was streaming on OnlyFans because she was streaming on Facebook Live, and then he so. It says here, Mr. Howard claimed that the waiter serving his table overstepped his bounds by uh, leveling several sexual uh, insults at the family, including calling him a pedo for being with his 14-year-old and accusing him of incest while asking his 14-year-old daughter if she had an OnlyFans account. So the dad says, my young daughter was doing a Facebook Live, uh, and this guy came up to us and says, are you on OnlyFans, you tart? Here's some content for you, and then pretended to wank off and jizz on the table. To an underage girl? Mr. Howard then said his daughter was uh, uncomfortable and upset after the waiter called her father a, father a pedophile and said he was keeping it in the family. All of these bad stories are coming out of the Brisbane location. This one is the Brisbane location. Uh, this one is the Brisbane location. This one's the Brisbane location. Like, yeah, all of them. And I'm, I, I'm like, yeah, they're just not funny. It was like a fun concept, right? To begin with, and I am interested, I guess, in what other people think but there, about th it. Like, this is just me. Yeah, there's comments on that who are, that are like, well, what do you expect? You know, you signed up for it. What do you expect? But, like, I think that th this is a joke gone too far and that – It's markedly different from, from the videos that made them viral. Exactly. Because, like, there everybody was having fun. You were all right? in on, on the bit. And it, was, it was a give what you get or get what you give. Sorry, it was a get what you give type thing, right? But, but they, ha what, they had like a base level of sass. And then if you were rude to them, they would up it, right? Yeah. But, but it, it's, it's dinner theater, right? Like fundamentally, it's a dinner theater concept. Mm -hmm. And those are really hard to franchise because you, at, as dinner theater, you need a director. You can't just like – Leave a bunch of young 20-year-olds – <laughs> I, or you can't just like have some fucking random 40 year old businessman who's like well this, this idea is really profitable right now i'm gonna invest in this you know like you can't and and just just do whatever the way that people do with mcdonald's or subway where like they'll own like there are franchise owners who like 
have their own mini chain within a city or whatever. You can't do that. The management needs to be hands on for oh this. Oh my god! Oh concept. my god! Do How many th- franchises? Yeah, that's why. That's why. One, two, they went three, from four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve locations in less than a year. So, so like, it may not be... all over the world too. These aren't all in Australia. Manchester, like Gold's Coast, Perth, Auckland, Birmingham. A lot of those are Australia. Uh, Melbourne is is Australia, but Manchester, I don't think is Australia. Is, is that, there a Manchester in Australia? There might be. Uh, Manchester, like I think Manchester's England, but Perth is Australia. Um, obviously, Perth is Australia. Okay, hold on. No, UK, Manchester, UK. Manchester, UK. Epic American moment of us. <laughs> Well, I mean, I didn't was, know if there was, was a Manchester in, in... I'm sorry, there definitely is no Sheffield in Australia. That is definitely a, a UK in it. it. UK in it. We're in Sheffield in it. Scroll down to make sure that you're not hilariously wrong. No, Sheffield, UK. Okay, okay, good. Um, I'm surprised um, they don't have a US location. Anyway, we, they've opened that many locations in, like, I think eight months or nine months, like, yeah, yeah, because they, I, they blew up less than a year ago, and like, For sure. I think, I think they blew up in spring. Like, yeah, it, it was... ma- like it makes sense, you know. They're they're like trying for the the Mr. Beast Burger approach. I mean, to I mean franchising. they're they're trying for like, but they're also trying for an experience dining, and you can't do that. You, you can't, can't franchise no. an experience out nine times over in like a nine few months, months. Like, and and like expect especially it when to it's something good. that touchy, right? Yeah, like. It's one thing when it's a regular restaurant where, like, oh, the gimmick is we put a lot of cheese on everything. Or, like, you know, it's not like a vibe. It's the, the, like, Or the heart attack grill where the gimmick is the food will kill you. Yeah, like the gimmick is they slap you if you don't die. Like, But that's also only one location. Maybe two, but I think it's only one location. And that's how it works. Yeah. You have one location where you where hyper-focus they, like... on making sure it is the experience, right? But franchising is just, how you make money in in. Anyway, yeah, that's I, all, that's my deep dive. That's my deep dive. I said anyway again. <laughs> I think I think like the like the Brisbane location is definitely they, they like, gotta go. Brisbane yeah. location is definitely a problem. But I think just the 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 real issue here is the people who own the business have just did not put their their customers or the concept first they were like here is how we can make the most money in the shortest amount of time go 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 yeah and it's blowing up in their faces and <laughs> sorry burger just had a burger moment yeah i yeah i don't Man. i think it's going to be a short-lived thing but franchising also ruined the rainforest cafe as we found out from Eddie Burbank's but, but, video. But, and like this, that's it. I think they should have kept it to one location. Yeah. And it could have worked. But now they're just letting these people run wild and it's, it's they're just dist- bullies. They're just yeah. bullying people, right? They're just, and they've lost the plot of what a Karen is. They're just letting people who want to be mean be mean and yeah. work there and like, and like I, you know, I might go to the one in Sydney. I might still go to the one in Sydney, but I'm never taking a fucking chance on one of these yeah, these franchises. I don't know. Even then, like I don't think they're gonna last. I think they're gonna get themselves in some serious trouble eventually, or or something. Yeah. Like anyway, I. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all. Though. That's all. I. That's my. I went down the Karen's Diner rabbit hole, and while I think it is a fun idea. To have, especially as somebody who is, I I spent like 13 or 14 years in customer service, right? I know what those people are like, what the customers are like, and I know what it would be like to be on the other side of that and how fun it could be. But they've they've gone way past that. That is not what it's like. But it it does, like, the original one felt like actors playing a role Mm -hmm. for the fun of... Uh, a gimmick it, for the gimmick. fun, yeah, for brand, the fun yeah. of the gimmick. Yeah, and then th- th- this does feel like minimum wage employees yeah. getting their first taste of power and going full Stanford Prison Experiment. Yeah. immediately, yeah. like, um, and like I don't know anything about Australian stereotypes. Maybe it's just that Brisbane is just like that. Who knows? I don't think so. I don't think so. Based off of how many people are coming out about 
they're bad experiences. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, if you've ever been, if there's some crazy chance that the people who watch this, if any of you have been to the Karen Steiner, I yeah. would love to know if you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, or but, if you're an Australian with like a lot of salt about other areas of Australia, just like, please leave comments about how much you hate other cities. Those will be funny. Actually, her full name is Kaburger. Kabur the K is invisible. You know. They got silent letters. We invented the invisible letters for our cat burger. For our little baby. Our little baby. She's very well behaved today. You want to go on the table? <gasps> Criminal on the table. Criminal off the table soon. No. Oh. <laughs> Criminal posing for the camera. <laughs> Did she just yawn into the camera? I think she might have. She she immediately went to be the star of the show. Hi burger. Hi burger. Hi burger. Hi Bobby. Bobby's meowing. He's gonna. Oh, I'm getting another call. Uh, should I pick yeah, it up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we'll end it. <laughs>